Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. I'm so glad you're here. I'm guessing there's a good chance that you are here because you went to Walmart or Lowe's or some other big box store and you bought a Venus flytrap on an impulse. Well, fear not, you've reached the right place. I'm gonna give you some really good beginner care tips and show you what to do next with these Venus flytraps so that you don't kill them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing that I want you to do now that you've got your Venus flytrap out of its death cube is I want you to throw these death cubes away. Get rid of them. The instructions on the back are worthless. You do not need to have your Venus flytrap in a terrarium. And then what I want you to do is I want you to head on over to my website. You can see the link up here. And you can also click on the link in the description. And I want you to download these Venus flytrap care sheet instructions. It's free, just throw on your email. You get these, uh, these instructions. And these are gonna give you everything that you need to know. And it's gonna be some of the stuff that I'm covering here today. Uh, so make sure and go get this free uh, care sheet. It's, it's, in, it's one page, it's easy to print. It's easy to have on your computer, super simple. So make sure and download those. And also with that download, you would get a free plant tracker. So you can track your watering and, and all that stuff, whether it's for carnivorous plants or any other plant. So you get a, you get a free plant tracker and you get that free carnivorous plant, or I'm sorry, Venus flytrap care sheet. And it's gonna give you all the information you need. I'm gonna go over a little bit more today than that's probably on that. But also another thing you need to know is I do have a very in-depth video that's about 40 minutes long that covers complete Venus flytrap care, where I go into everything in a lot more depth. So go check out that video in my description if you want more in-depth instructions. I'm gonna to try to keep this kind of quick so that we can go over this and that I can talk about this really quickly. Um, and I do have a lot of other videos that expand on a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about today. So make sure and check the, the description if you didn't get enough today or if you want more Venus flytrap care information. All right, so yeah, so go ahead and throw these away. One of the most important things I want you to understand is that the Venus flytraps do not need a terrarium. We'll just go into that right now, uh, mostly because we're already talking about these little death cubes. The instructions on those are terrible. And also, Venus flytraps do not need terrariums. That's a really, really common misconception. A lot of people think that Venus flytraps are tropical. They are definitely not tropical. They, they actually natively grow in North Carolina, so they do go through a winter dormancy. So they're really, really not a good plant for a terrarium because terrariums are really difficult to induce any type of winter dormancy for. And we're gonna talk about dormancy more in here in just a minute. But one of the, one of the next things that I want you to do is, if possible, I want you to repot these Venus flytraps. I want you to, to repot them into a completely new container, a new uh, planter, and I want you to give them brand new substrate. And we're gonna talk about that here in a minute. If you do not have substrate and you do not have a planter, this is not an option for you, and you have to keep them in these for now, what you need to do is you need to flush these. Okay, I'm gonna show you a video on screen here. Venus flytraps, both in their substrate and their water, require something that has no minerals, no nutrients. Those things actually burn Venus flytraps, so you actually need to use like a distilled water and a soil that has absolutely no nutrients. So you'll see, I'm measuring the water that comes off of these as I'm flushing these in my sink. Um, this is a TDS meter, and this will actually measure the parts per million in water. They're kind of cool, you can actually measure your drinking water too, so you know what you're getting. But you don't want your Venus flytrap to be in water or substrate that's gonna put off more than 50 parts per million. And as you can see from my, my flush that I did above, this Lowe's Venus flytrap here, they have like 250 parts per million. No wonder this plant looks like crud. Look at that, this plant does not look like it's doing very well. And that's because that substrate's putting out water that's 250 parts per million. That's way too high. That's definitely gonna kill your Venus flytrap. So I would say you absolutely need to remove it from the substrate or if you're gonna keep it in the substrate, you need to flush that thing like crazy. You probably need to flush it with like a half gallon of water and just let that flow right down the sink. The Rocket Farms Venus flytrap, the one I got from Walmart, was only about 70 parts per million. So that's significantly better. It's still not great for the Venus flytrap, but it, this is only gonna take probably two or three flushes. And you can see now that the water get, dropped down to like 30 parts per million with just a few flushes. So this one wasn't too bad. Good job, Rocket Farms. Googlers from Lowe's, shame on you for having such a bad substrate to have your Venus flytrap in. If it wasn't you, Googler, it could have been that the people at Lowe's watered these, but it's a little bit less likely because these come sealed. So whatever happened, somehow these got some really high parts per million water or really high parts per million substrate, not good. So we will need to get this out of there. So I recommend repotting it. 
Hey, real quick, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you so much for being here. I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate you visiting my channel, watching this video. I'm really, really hoping that it's been helpful and it's had some good tips for you. So far, if it's been helpful, make sure and give me a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Those things really, really help me out. I'm actually striving to open my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. So you subscribing to my channel or liking the video, all that stuff helps me out an immense amount. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, hopefully this video is helping you out and um, we can get you growing some Venus fly traps. Now, if you're gonna repot this, you do need a substrate to put it in. You do not wanna put this in any type of normal gardening soil. Nothing that has miracle grow. You're gonna want a peat moss and perlite and sand mix, or at least a peat moss and perlite. I have that right here. So here is, um, this is just, you can just buy peat moss at Lowe's, and then you can get like uh, some, some perlite at Lowe's and, and just kind of mix them together. I just like to do like close to a 50-50 or like a 60-40, and I do have a little bit of silica sand in here, you can see, but the silica sand isn't super, super important. Um, it does help create a little bit better aeration, airflow, water flow a little bit better, um, but you do want, you don't want to, you want, don't want to use pure peat moss because the peat moss will clump up and get really hard over time. This perlite in here makes it so that peat moss doesn't get clumpy and super compact. So I recommend a peat moss and perlite mix. That's my number one mix. If you have access to that, that's definitely what you're going to want to get. If you have to leave these in here for a few days while you're waiting to get your mix, just make sure and flush them really well. As a secondary option, another thing you can do is you can get some orchid moss. You can get this right at Lowe's. This is like a like a sphagnum moss mix that you can that you can put your Venus flytraps in. So you can just kind of put this in your pot. I don't use this for Venus flytraps as much. I use this more for my Nepenthes plants, but it is definitely a good option for you if you don't have if you want to repot and you don't have access to the peat moss and perlite mix. So either one of those mixes will do well. Make sure if you're gonna go with something like this, if you, don't, if you can't get this brand, stay away from the miracle Grow brand because miracle Grow puts fertilizer in it and you wanna stay away from any type of fertilizer. So make sure and go with something that doesn't have any additives, no fertilizer, nothing added. And that's the same with your peat moss. Make sure that it's 100% pure sphagnum peat moss. Otherwise, if you get something with additives in it, then you'll get that same readout from your water. So. If you want to pick up one of these, that's great from Amazon. I got a link in the description. These are really cheap, it's like 10 bucks. And you can always, you can measure your tap water. Sometimes tap water works, uh, but pro probably not. Usually tap water comes out a little bit higher parts per million. So let's talk about water real quick. So what you want to do is you want to get distilled water uh, from the supermarket. Now I know that there's a problem right now with distilled water. A lot of people can't find it. So what I recommend is one of these guys. This has been a lifesaver for me is this zero water pitcher and so sorry mine's a little dirty i don't i only use this for plants i don't use this for drinking water so i excuse it for being a little dirty but cool thing about these is they actually come with a tds meter so if you want a tds meter and you want to be able to measure that then this this zero water pitcher comes with that so the way that this works is you just put some water in the basin here and then you let that water filter down through here oh my focus isn't working just a second it filters down through there and then it comes out as zero water. And depending on how high your parts per million are out of the sink or out of the faucet, this could actually get you, you know, for 30, 40 gallons of water. I think I'm on about, um, I think 35 gallons right now that I've made from this one filter. And I think this is like, these are like 20 bucks and it comes with one filter and then you can get the replacement filters for like 10, 15 bucks each. So you can get a lot of water out of this and it ends up being a little bit cheaper than if you just buy the distilled water. I think it's like a dollar per gallon-ish, uh, depending on where you live. So it can actually end up being a lot cheaper over time. And, and it really is, is sufficient and works well. I basically just take the water from it, I put it in a gallon here and then I just store it. I have four gallons that I keep sort of uh, at all times when I get two gallons down. I refill the other two and then, then I'm good to go. So make sure you get a water that's distilled. Uh, if you get distilled water from the store, you don't need to measure it. You can feel confident that your distilled water should be good to go. If you can't get your hands on distilled water, bam, zero water pitcher. I got a link in the description so you can get one of these bad boys. I think they sell them at Walmart. So whatever's most convenient for you, definitely score yourself a zero water pitcher. You'll be happy you did that, especially if you're trying to grow Venus flytraps or other carnivorous plants. So they come really, really in handy. All right, so that covers the water and the soil. Make sure your planter, um, we'll keep it simple with your planter. Get a plastic planter. You don't want anything that's ceramic or anything that's like terracotta because they can leach minerals into the soil. Just get a, just get something that's plastic and something that has holes, drainage holes in the bottom. That's really important because you want to be able to tray water these so you want to put it in a tray of water you want to allow that water to soak up into the into the planter and then you want it to I don't I don't keep these in the tray of water all the time 
what you want to do is you want to give it like maybe a day or two where there's there's no water try to get comfortable with the weight of your pot know how it feels when you've just watered so when when it's full and then know how it feels when it's empty so then you can just kind of pick up the pot and know if, the, if your plant needs water uh, you if it's if it's warmer and it's hot and in the summertime you can definitely keep the tray full all the time that won't hurt it but when the weather gets a little bit cooler these are subject to crown rot and you can kill a venus flytrap with crown rot if you give it too much water especially during colder months because uh, that water doesn't go away as fast but in the summer when it's really hot the water goes away so quickly that you can probably get away with that tray of water is is always full and then here's kind of what I mean by a tray. So you want to put your pot in the tray. You can get these at Lowe's too. There you go. And then I just keep, you just kind of fill up the, the tray about halfway or, or, or an inch or so. And then uh, once that completely goes away, I, I usually let it stay like that for a day or two, depending on how hot it is. And then I'll fill that water back up. And then you can always kind of tell, um, you can stick your finger in, in to the tip. If, if, if it's not, if it's dry, like a half inch down, you probably are too dry. Don't let it get that dry. If it's dry just under the surface, that's a good indication that, that you've let it drought enough and you should probably give it a little bit more water. Also, I do have a video all about watering Venus flytraps. I got a ton of good information in there. Link in the description if you want more information about watering or if you have a question about watering, it's probably answered in that video, so check that out. Okay, lighting. So one of the most important things that people usually get wrong with Venus flytraps is they wanna grow a Venus flytrap in their windowsill. Now, some people have had success growing Venus flytraps in windowsills, so I'm not going to say that you can't do it, but I am going to tell you that if you do grow it in a windowsill, you're highly increasing your chances of killing your Venus flytrap. So, what you really, really want to do is you want to get these outside. That's the best way to grow them. You want to get these outside in full sun, and you want to give them as much sun as possible. When you first get them and they're like this, they haven't had a lot of light. They've been kind of in the dark, so you want to acclimate them. You want to start with maybe four hours of sun a day, the next week go up to five hours, next week go up to six hours, and then keep working your way up like that until you're as, as much sun as possible, 12, 14 hours of sun a day. These guys really, really like a ton of sun. Even when it's over 100 degrees, they usually will eat up all that sun and do really well. Just kind of keep an eye on them when it's that hot outside. If they look like they're starting to burn a little bit, maybe give them a little bit of shade in the afternoon to get them out of that harsh sun. But for the most part, they really, really like that sun. Just make sure when it gets that hot that you're giving them a little extra water because they're gonna be burning through that water a lot quicker during the growing season. If you must grow them inside, if you live in an apartment or you don't have access to anywhere outside, you can get a grow light. I'm gonna show you this grow light right here. This bad boy right here, this is called a Sansi 36 watt grow light. I have a, a link in the description for you and there's also this clamp light here. This you can cl kind of clamp it down, or I'm sorry, you can kind of screw it in there and then you can clamp it, which makes it really kind of convenient to be able to, to kind of hang anywhere inside. And then uh, you want to get this bad boy about 10 to 12 inches away from your Venus flytrap and then give it that 12 to 14 hours a day. Uh, if possible. These last a really long time. They're a really good grow bulb. The last one I had lasted about a year and a half before I had to buy another one and I think they're like between 20 and 40 bucks depending if you can get one on sale. So if you have to grow them inside and you must use a grow light, that is a really, really good option and I strongly suggest that one for you to, to be able to grow a Venus flytrap. You can probably get three or four under that and that will give you enough area to cover three or four Venus flytraps. So if you only have one or two, that'll be a perfect grow light for you. All right, let's talk about winter dormancy real quick. Before I go too deep into winter dormancy, I do want to say I have a video that covers winter dormancy in very, very depth. So if you have any questions after I talk about winter dormancy, make sure and go to that video and check it out. Basically, in a nutshell, you want to be able to get your Venus flytrap in an area where it's going to stay between 35 and 45 degrees during the winter time. Uh, when it's that cold outside, you really don't need to ex expose it to too much light. If you have like a, a, an unheated garage or an unheated room, where you can put these in a windowsill during the winter time, that's like the most ideal. Or if you can put them outside and overwinter them. Uh, by overwintering, what I mean is you can put like bark on top of them, you can put uh, snow on top of them. There's lots of different ways to kind of insulate the plant as you go into winter to make sure that they don't freeze. Uh, so you can't keep them outside, you can definitely winter them outside. Um, for more information, make sure to check out my dormancy video because dormancy is kind of a, a giant beast and there's a lot of information to be had there. And if you want more information on that, and make sure and check that out because these do need to go through a winter dormancy to be able to sustain life for, for a long amount of time. Uh, some people can get them to live without dormancy, but it, it does take in a very experienced grower and you really have to know what you're doing. So make sure and go check out that video so that you can put these guys through a dormancy period and make sure that they have a really, really long life. 
Okay, and then the thing that's the absolute most fun is feeding your Venus flytrap. What should you feed a Venus flytrap? Well, if you have it outside and it's growing in full sun, I almost guarantee you you're not going to need to feed your Venus flytrap. Venus flytraps are really, really good at catching their own flies, and if they're left outside, they're just going to do a good job of that. If you are keeping them inside and they're not getting any flies or any insects, what you can do is you can feed them like mealworms, you can feed them uh, flies from around your house. Uh, mealworms are probably the easiest because you can buy them, you can soak them in a little bit of water and then throw it in the Venus flytrap. So the dried mealworms work. Um, you can probably feed crickets. I would stay away from anything that's got a really tough exoskeleton like beetles. Uh, cock I've heard people ask about cockroaches, um, beetles, that kind of stuff. They don't do very well. That usually just kind of kills your trap. So, so kind of stay away from that. You want the kind of softer bodied insects like, like flies is a really good example. Um, obviously since they're, they're fly traps, but they, they do a really good job digesting flies. So, and, and feel free to feed your Venus fly traps almost as much as you want. I know when mine are outside, basically every trap has a fly in it almost all the time. So don't overfeed them. I wouldn't feed every trap, but I would say feed one trap um, like once a week and you're probably going to be okay. Uh, they'll digest that, that insect for a couple days and then they'll open back up after about seven. And then usually a fly trap can eat three, three to four times before they eventually will turn black and die. But at that point, the trap has done everything it's needed to do to supply energy for its plant. So that's that's kind of what they do, and that's what they're there for. So Venus flytraps fertilize themselves by by catching the insects. You don't you don't necessarily give them fertilizer. The fertilizer is the insect. They need the sun to grow, and then they eat the flies and bugs for fertilizer. All right, and then for the sake of time, I am not going to be repotting these Venus flytraps today in this video, although I am going to repot them because that 250 parts per million on this Lowe's Venus flytrap is just ridiculous. But if you would like to see how it what, how it works to repot a Venus flytrap, check out a uh, link in the description below. I have tons of really, really great resource videos. I'll show you exactly how to repot a Venus flytrap. There's a video to talks about whether or not you should cut the flower stalk off. There's uh, videos that go in depth with Venus flytrap care, and I'm talking like 40 minute videos. So if you want some really, really in depth guides on care, I have a in depth watering guide. I have an in depth dormancy guide. All that stuff's in the description. Just check it out. If you want to learn more about how to grow Venus flytraps and how to care for them, it's all there for you guys. It's 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 uh, it's not completely conventional when it comes to care for these, but they, but it's also really not all that difficult if you just take the time to learn how they work and uh, what you need to do to keep them alive. So thanks again so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, trying to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. So uh, you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, all that stuff helps me out a ton. Make sure to go get your Venus flytrap care sheet at the website, link in the description, and your free plant tracker. All that stuff is free for you guys. Just make sure and go check it out. Again, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you so much, and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.